I'm Ian Somerville. And in this video on cybersecurity, I want to talk about the extent of the cybersecurity problem. How big a problem is this for individuals, for businesses? I also want to talk about some of the reasons why we have a problem with cybersecurity and what we might be able to do about it. First of all, how big is this problem? What's the scale of the problem? Well, <clears throat> we know it's a big problem, but we're not too sure how big it is. There's a lot of difficulties in actually measuring uh, how cybersecurity affects businesses and individuals. The problem is there's, there's lots of surveys, lots of different organisations do different surveys, but these are not all done the same way, they don't all collect the same data, so therefore they come up with different results. If we look at the effect of cybersecurity on individuals, we see there's really three things that can go wrong for individuals. There's cyber fraud, where they are defrauded out of money by cyber activities. There's identity theft, uh, where their identity is stolen and used for some other purpose, sometimes for cyber fraud. And there's cyber bullying or cyber stalking that I talked about in my video on different types of cyber attack. Now, a recent survey suggested that in the UK, more than 9 billion people had been affected by cybercrime. And of these, about 8% <coughs> had been affected, had actually suffered financial losses. It's not clear whether they, these were financial losses that weren't reimbursed or financial losses that were reimbursed by the bank because someone, for example, had illegally accessed the bank account. Cyberbullying seems to be an increasing and widespread problem. Um, again, a recent survey showed that for <coughs> teenagers and children from 10 to 18 year olds, almost 20% had been cyberbullied in some way. For businesses, we find there's widely differing estimates as to the effects of cybercrime. And this is compounded by the fact that businesses are often reluctant to admit that they've been a victim of cybercrime. And when they do admit it, they sometimes exaggerate the scale of their losses. They, don't, they, 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 they take the worst case analysis they, and they ignore, for example, expenses they would have incurred. Uh, in estimating these losses. Here's a couple of examples. One suggested that cybercrime costs businesses in Scotland £160 a second. Okay, what does that mean in, real in annual terms? It's about £5 billion a year. Another survey suggested a figure six times this, that the, the losses due to cybercrime in, in Scotland for businesses was £31 billion a year. I have no idea which of these which are of these figures is true, if any of them are true. The global cost of cybercrime again differs, or estimates of the global cost again differ dramatically. From 100 billion, 100 billion would suggest that the 31 billion for a small country like Scotland is a bit of an exaggeration, to a trillion, so that's, that's a thousand million, so a factor of 10 in these estimates. So we, we, we know that this is a big problem, they're all big numbers, but we simply have no idea the true extent of the financial losses suffered by businesses from cybercrime. Nations are now all waking up to the fact that cyber warfare and cyber attacks by terrorists or criminals on critical infrastructure is a really serious issue. And they're all thinking of how to protect themselves and devoting quite a lot of resources to building cyber protection systems. This is an estimate uh, produced in the US suggesting that there's going to be $46 billion, billion dollars rather, spent annually on protecting critical infrastructure. $46 billion is a lot of money. But then when you think, well, if the losses are $100 billion a year, Putting it in perspective, it, it's not that much if it, if it saves very significant losses. Some countries are actively developing cyber warfare capabilities 
So they're, they're thinking about how they can attack other countries using cyber technology. Countries like the United States, Israel, undoubtedly others, are definitely developing cyber warfare capabilities. They're going, they're spending a lot of money and resource to go out and find ways to attack the critical national infrastructure of other countries. Why has this become such a problem? Why do we have this major problem with cybersecurity? Well, there's a number of reasons. There's the scale and ubiquity of the internet. Everyone is connected to the internet now. I mean, the number of internet connections across the world is, is incredible. Um, in developed countries, all businesses, most individuals are connected to the internet. And even in, in, in developing countries where there is a, a relatively lower level of penetration, it's still very significant. Cybercrime carries a lot less risk for criminals. So we have accessibility because the Individuals and businesses are connected to the internet and lower risk. Criminals see the, a way of, of getting uh, and being able to, to commit crimes, to, to defraud individuals at a much lower risk than they would face if they were carrying out physical crimes. And there are fundamental business and technical reasons why our internet enabled systems are not really very secure. If you look at the business reasons, basically, Businesses have been concerned in using the internet to grow their customer base. They've been focusing on getting connected, on building internet customers, building online customers. So therefore, they've been less concerned with security. For business reasons, connectivity has taken precedence over security. The thing about security is it's inconvenient. It slows down transactions, it puts people off. So therefore, in many cases, businesses are willing to accept the costs of insecurity. It's a bit like banks and credit card fraud. It's cheaper for banks to accept a level of credit card fraud than to put systems in place that would reduce that. Businesses are looking at cybersecurity in the same way. The know there will be losses from cyber security, from cyber attacks, but they're willing to accept these because they believe that the benefits of easy access for their customers outweighs these. So as well as these business reasons, there's technical reasons why we have cyber security problems. The internet was invented in the 19, late 1960s, 1970s, and it was primarily a research network. It involved organizations that were friendly and trusted each other. There was no thought for security. It was also the case at that time, the computing equipment was orders of magnitude slower than we have now. So the focus on building the internet was on performance, security checks, encryption and things like that, slow things down so they didn't think of including these in internet protocols. Now, these protocols called IP and TCP protocols made it very easy for the internet to be widely adopted in the 1990s. So they were fundamental to the, to the explosion of use of the internet. But if we want to solve the problems of internet security, we need to completely redesign the protocols with security in mind. And while that's technically quite possible, it's commercially very difficult and certainly not practical to do so in the short term. Here's some examples of, of internet vulnerabilities. Um, one of the key issues is that packets by default are not encrypted. So therefore packets traveling over the internet can be intercepted and their contents read. The addressing system on the internet, the domain name system, is something that can be fooled. It's possible to send traffic from one address and make it look as if it's coming from another. It's easy to hide the address where traffic is coming from. And in fact, the way in which the, the hierarchical organization of servers is set up, uh, it's vulnerable to a denial of service attack and that's what's called a super server. So it, it will, that will then slow down 
internet traffic. And the mail system, the protocol used for email, was never designed for mail charging. We don't have charging, so therefore we have spam. And it's estimated that more than 90% of the email messages that are sent across the internet every day are actually spam rather than legitimate messages. But technology is not the only problem. The problems that arise in cybersecurity almost always are not just technical problem, but they stem from a mixture of technical, human and organisational issues. We can think about risks in three ways. There's risks due to the actions of people, things that people do. There's risks that derive from the hardware and the software. And there are risks which are due to organisational processes. Examples of risks that come from people are people giving away their login details, their legitimate credentials, either accidentally or maliciously, to unauthorised people. The other problem can come where people don't secure their personal devices, that, so that if these devices are lost or left unattended, someone can get access to them and get access to the user's personal information. We get insider actions where people inside an organisation, because they're disaffected perhaps, because they haven't been promoted, they will damage or corrupt data. We have the natural human tendency to prefer usability over security. People will set weak passwords, passwords that are easy to guess, like the name of the dog or the name of their daughter. Because they're easy to remember, they don't slow you down. We get people's actions which affect the hardware and software. So there's configuration errors made when setting up security systems like firewalls. Developers make programming errors, so therefore they leave vulnerabilities in their software which can be exploited by attackers. Things like buffer overflow, where an attacker can write past the end of a, of a software buffer. Or SQL poisoning, where a user with a form inputs some SQL and that causes the system to be damaged or information to be leaked. Organisationally, we have situations where organisations have no systematic process for patching software to fix security loopholes. They may have a lack of security auditing and they don't do their backups. If they don't do the backups when there's a problem, it's very difficult to recover quickly from that problem. In summary then, Cyber attacks are a major problem and a major cost for individuals, businesses and government. But it's very difficult to quantify exactly how big that cost is. The internet was not designed as a secure network. Therefore, there are fundamental security vulnerabilities which make it very hard to secure the internet completely. And people prefer usability over security. They don't follow security procedures. They, they, they make things easy for themselves, which means they also make them easy for attackers. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.